Hey family, this is Sarah Jakes Roberts and I am so excited about the incredible word that you're about to receive. There are just a few things I want to tell you before we dig into the word. Number one, let's make this thing official. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're already plugged in. Make sure you don't miss anything that comes out of this house. The second thing, did you know that it's more than just videos? We are doing so much to help the community and we want you to partner with us in literally changing the world. Give into this ministry so the fruit of it is incredible. The instructions are on the screen. Make sure that you are a part of what God is doing through One Online. Lastly, my husband's book, Balance, is coming out and I am so excited. And I got a gift for you. You will get the first three chapters of the book by going to the link below when you pre-order. Order. Pre-order the book. You don't want to miss it. It has tremendously blessed my life. And I can't wait for you to see what I've already partaken in. Balance is going to rock this world. Okay, let's get into the word. God bless you, one family. I am delighted to be with you today. I'm so excited about Sunday and not just any Sunday, but but Resurrection Sunday where we really get a chance to, to take a close look at the gospel and be blessed in unprecedented ways. And so I wanna get right into it and you still have time. If there's someone that you know needs a powerful life-changing word, tweet them out, text them, get them involved, galvanize your family, call Tyrone, Call Cynthia, call whoever you need to call, tell them to come into the living room or wherever you are and experience this word from the Lord. Now let's go to Philippians chapter two. We're gonna read the fifth verse to the 11th verse. It's not unfamiliar, you've heard it before, but we're gonna unpack it in a way that I think will be very, very edifying for us. And so let's go. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, hallelujah, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. It is life to us. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we just are so grateful that you have prepared a table for us to dine from, to be strengthened, to be nourished, to be encouraged, to be enlightened by. And we praise you for that. God, I thank you as your servant for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and knowledge and prophecy and a mighty anointing to deliver this message in a way that blesses your sons and daughters in an unusually unique way on this resurrection Easter Sunday. Have your way, bless somebody richly. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I, I've been excited about teaching this message and one of the reasons why I'm excited about this message is because the, the beauty of Easter and Good Friday and, and Christmas and those types of holidays is it allows us to focus more on the essence of God and not the hand of God. Let me explain. For, for most of us, our spirituality focuses on the promises of God, uh, the protection of God, and the provision of God. And all those things are wonderful and, and understandably so because, because thinking along these lines supports our everyday life and our everyday journey and they help to make it better. So I get why the majority of our time, of our time we're thinking about the promises, we're thinking about the protection, we're thinking about the provision. However, the beauty of Easter and some of those other holidays is that we don't simply focus on the promise, the protection and the provision, but we get to focus on the person of God. And there's something very, very powerful about focusing on the, per the person of God and more specifically the person of Jesus because it, it allows us to dig a little deeper. It takes us into a deeper dimension of our faith 
because we're focusing not solely on the benefits of God, but the being of God. And that takes us deeper and it allows us to go into a deeper dimension of our faith and our spirituality. And here is the thing, we are the offspring of God. In fact, we are beings ourselves. And so focusing on Christ, the person, enriches us in the context of our identity and our perception of self, which allows us, watch this, to show up in the world as something greater than just a grateful praiser, right? Listen, there's nothing wrong with being a grateful praiser, a hallelujah person. Listen, that's me every morning when I think about the goodness of God and I think about the faithfulness of God and I think about the blessing, the provision, the protection, all those things, I, I become a grateful praiser. But when I look at the person of God and I understand that I was created in the image of God and when I look at the person of Jesus more specifically, it takes me deeper because I get a reflection of myself. When I look at Jesus, I see me. In fact, the, the title of this message is, and you can too. Do me a favor, I just want you to say right now, I can too, I can too. And so, I want us to unpack these verses that we've been hearing for a long time. I want us to unpack this because it really speaks about how Jesus thought, what Jesus did, how he functioned, how he moved, and how he operated. And, and any time, you and I are seeking to become more powerful. Anytime you and I are seeking to be more of everything that God has created us to be, we must get to Jesus. We must analyze Jesus, his thought life, his behavior, how he did things, what he did, his sacrifice, because if we emulate that as he was powerful, we will become powerful. Are you tracking with me? If you're tracking with me, just put it right there in the feed if you're on YouTube and just say, I'm tracking PT. And oh, by the way, you're going to get Professor Teray today. I, I'm, I'm not going to, going to preach. I don't think I'm going to preach. How can I not preach on Easter? But pray for me. I want to, I want to really, really be Professor Teray in this season. And so I love it. It starts off by saying, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And so we're talking about his mentality. We're talking about how he saw things, how he thought, how he moved, and how he operated. And so, so let's look at it. Let's jump in it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. In other words, he was God in the flesh, and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been uh, inappropriate for him to, 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 to show up as God in the flesh and, and to take that posture. But it says that he made himself of no reputation. We're going to come back to that. And taking on the form, he took, he took on the form of a bond servant, literally a slave, a servant, doulos in the Greek. And it says, and coming in the likeness of man. Let me stop right now. Let me stop right there. Why did Jesus come in the likeness of man? Jesus, one of the reasons why Jesus came in the likeness of man as it relates to you and I, as it relates to how we move and we function, is because he came to show us how to do it. Are you tracking with me? Jesus came to show us how to do it. Yes, he was the son of God. Yes, he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Yes, he was the propitiation for our sins. He was all that. But one of the things as it relates to how me and you rock and roll every single day, Jesus showed me how to do it because what he did, he said, greater works you will do, which means that, and you can do it too. Just put it in the feed right now. Say it out loud. I can do it too. And so it says that he came in the likeness of men. In verse 8 it says, and being found in appearance as a man, it says he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Now let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. He humbled himself. That's powerful. The Bible says that Jesus humbled himself. What, what does that mean, he humbled himself? What it means is, and this is very important, Jesus submitted to a process. So he, he, found, he finds himself in the form of a man. He finds himself fashioned as a man, right? And he could have looked at that and said, oh, no, 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 I'm bigger than this. I'm better than that. Oh, I feel this is for somebody. He doesn't do that. He could have, it wasn't robbery for him to feel equal with God. He could have said, oh, no, 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 I don't like these circumstances. And said, I don't, since I don't like these circumstances, I'm going to exercise my will to circumvent my situation. Watch this. To attempt to circumvent my process. He could have done that. 
He had the a power and the ability to do that. It says being found in, in fashion as a man, right? Being found in appearance as a man, he finds himself, watch this, he finds himself in this very, very normal situation, this very, very undivine, seemingly, you know, unpowerful situation. This is how he finds himself. And what does he do? Instead of saying, no, 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 I'm not going to submit to the process, the Bible says that he humbles himself. He submits himself to a process. What process? He submits himself to the process of his calling. If you're taking notes, write this down. This is very important. Every calling has a process. Oh, God. Every calling has a process. And when we submit to the process, we access the power. Oh, you got to stay with me. Every calling has a process. And when we submit to the process, we access the power. So, so you, right now, right now, if you're called of God, and I believe that we all are called of God, many are called, but only few are chosen. I believe the people who are chosen are the ones who are willing to submit to the process. But all of us have a calling on our life. And, and right now, you might find yourself in undesirable circumstances, for a season, for a moment. And you may want to wiggle out of it. You may want to say, that this, because it's hard, it must not be God. And you know how I feel about that. I feel like it's just the opposite. I've seen God the most powerful and the most clear in difficult moments and difficult things, right? And I would encourage you to do the same thing that Jesus did. Submit to the process. It, it, it sounds something like, Father, if this were possible, let this cup pass for me. If this possible, in other words, if this ain't you, then please let it pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's what it looks like. That's what submitting to the process looks like. I almost want to dig in there real good. I wish I had about four hours with you. What, what does it look like when your calling is requiring a process that is not enjoyable? or a process that is filled with uncertainty, or a process that requires you to leave the familiar. What do you do? Do you cling to the familiar? Do you try to rewrite the calling? Or do you do like Jesus and humble yourself? Hallelujah. I, I think the wise thing to do is to, is to be like Jesus, to submit to the process so that we can access the power. Are you tracking with me? There's power, hear me, there's power in your calling itself. Mm. When, when God calls you in that calling, and we know that that word, those who are called according to his purpose in Romans 8, 28, that word called literally means to be invited. When you're called in the calling itself, there's an anointing. Oh, God. In the calling, there's powerful. God does not call us. And then leave us to our own strength and ability to fulfill that calling. No, there, there's, there's power. I feel it right there. there. There's power in it. That's why when you run from your calling, you're running from your power. Because you were created. I feel the Lord. You, you were created and called before the foundation of the world. It, it goes something like this. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I ordained you. What does that mean? I empowered you for something. And so the calling is an invitation to the power. I feel God, but I got to get through these notes. Do me a favor. If you're called and you know you're called, say it out loud. Put it in the feed. Say, I'm called. I'm called. I'm called. Hallelujah. I'm called. Because as you acknowledge the call and you embrace the call and you submit yourself to the process of the call, you are one step closer to becoming unstoppable. The power is in the calling. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. So we see Jesus submitting to the process of his calling, right? He humbles himself. He didn't have to, but he humbles himself. And let's look and see how God the Father responds. It says, in being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Man, that's crazy obedience. Even the death of the cross, that's double crazy obedience. And then it says, watch this. Now God steps in. Because he humbles himself, he submits to the process. Now God steps in and it says, therefore, God has highly exalted him. Can we just stop 
right there. I love this because prior to that, it says that that Jesus made himself of no reputation. I love this. This would this this is insanity in today's world because all we do is try to make ourselves of some reputation. Our, our bio links say we're this and we're that, right? Even our, our, our actual screen name is, a, you never heard, you never see anybody's screen name saying, saying something like, I'm just a lowly old servant. No, it's always the real Torrey Roberts. Come on, somebody. The, the official, original, whatever, right? So, so this whole making yourself of no reputation is so counter to the culture that we live in. And yet Jesus does this very thing. I feel this. So, so watch this, because he didn't promote himself, God not only promoted him, but he exalted him higher than he ever could have imagined being exalted. I feel that. I hear God giving someone an instruction in this season. If you want to be elevated, lower yourself. Make yourself of no reputation. I'm not saying think little of yourself. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says a man should not think more highly of himself than he ought to, meaning that he ought to think highly of himself. But I'm talking about this this culture and the spirit of self-promotion. Passing out your cards everywhere you can. I'm not talking about networking and doing that. That's all wonderful. There's a place for that in business. But I'm talking about putting yourself out there like you're somebody. Jesus didn't do that. He had every opportunity and every right to do it, but he doesn't do it. He he makes himself of no reputation. He submits to the process of the calling that's on his life, and God responds. Because of his humility, because of his submission, because of his surrender, God responds. And it says, therefore, in verse 9, it says, therefore, God, watch this, has highly, highly exalted him. I feel that for somebody. There's somebody that's, that's been walking in humility. You, you've been walking in, in, on the backside of the desert. You, you have been, you know, you, you've, you've been humbled. You have been, I feel this for some. This is so strong. I feel it so strong. You've been serving and, and, and you haven't complained and you, you've wanted to complain and, and you've seen people pass you up. And, and there were moments where you thought it was your time, but it, but it, it turned out to not be your time. And you, you took it, you ate it, and you kept on serving. You didn't get bitter and, and go and start trying to make yourself of no reputation. And I hear God saying you're stepping into a season where because you were faithful and those things were tests, because you were faithful in the season when no one called your name, when no one even considered you, when no one recognized the work that you were doing or who you were in God. I hear God saying, I was seeing you the entire time and I am getting ready to elevate you. Watch this in a way that you could have never elevated yourself. If that's your word, say, I receive it, PT. That's my word. Give it to me. Holler at me right now. Say, that's my word. Because that's the way that our God rules. And so God does two things. He highly exalts Jesus because of this. Therefore means he did that because of Jesus' posture. And we're watching Jesus and we're watching his posture because we want ours too. Are you tracking with me? So he does two things. He highly exalts him, but that's not all he does. Watch this. It says, therefore God also highly exalted him. Watch this. And it says... That he gives him the name which is above every name. And then there's some other things that it says. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. So this posture that, that Jesus finds himself in, that Jesus creates, and that Jesus perpetuates, brings power into his life, brings the elevation of God into his life. But God doesn't stop there. He says, and I'm also going to give you a name. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And I'm going to give you a name that's above every name. I believe that when you submit to the process, when you submit to the process of your call, not only will God elevate you, but God is going to give you a name. You're like, PT, I got a name. What are you talking about? My mama and my daddy gave me a name. My name is Tom. My name is Torre. My name is Shanice. My name, my name is Paula. My name is Michael. No, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the name that your people gave you. I'm talking about your divine name. When God says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, he's speaking about an identity that he has known, that he has seen, 
that you may not know yet. <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter one, what God said, before I formed you, I knew you. Jeremiah was saying, oh, no, 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 no. He says, God told me before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, I ordained you, I set you, I sanctified you to be a prophet to the nation. In other words, you are mighty in God. You are my prophet. Jeremiah said, oh, no, no, hold up, homie. You, mm -mm -mm. He says, I'm a child. He literally says, I'm a child. I can't, I can't speak. So his perception of who he was was completely different from who God knew he was. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I feel the Lord. That's what I'm talking about when I say God is going to bring you into your name. So you have a name. I feel it. You, you have a name that's higher than the name that you have now. And it's the name that God has given to you. It is an identity. And when you tap into that name, all of creation, watch this, all of the created thing, everything in the universe, watch this, will respect you on another level. Doors will have to open simply because you've shown up. Your essence, your name will release a sound that people will have to pay attention to. Hallelujah. See, there is favor, but the favor, watch this, isn't assigned to who you think you are. The favor is assigned to who God knows you are. And so I've got to get to the process where I submit to my calling. I make myself of no reputation. I, I go to the process. I don't fight the process because I need to get to my name. Because when I get to my name, I get to my favor. Are you tracking with me? He gave him a name. He didn't just elevate him. He gave him a name. He gave him an identity. He gave him an identity. And God wants to do the same for you. What's your name? I know what they call you. I know what you call you. But what's your name? Really? What's your name? Do you know? Maybe you don't. But I tell you what. If you submit to God. And you submit to the process and you trust him enough to work through wherever he sends you. He's going to give you a new name. Are you tracking with me? Let's go further. And so he gave him a name. He gave him a name. And in Jesus' case, he gave him a name which was above every name. And, and I'll tell you something that's interesting. When it says that. In the text, when it talks about Jesus being obedient, that's an interesting word because that word literally means to listen attentively, right? To listen. It's not just to, to just, I'm just obeying. No, it means to listen attentively. I, I believe that the person that's going to walk with God and really be surrendered to God and really obey God is one who learns how to quiet the noise, how to shut the noise out and listen attentively, attentively. To God, I am an attentive in order. Watch this in order to for me to be radically obedient. And it takes radical obedient to get elevated and to get my name in order for me to be radically obedient. I have to be radically attentive to the voice of God. See, there's some people out there and you don't even know what to do. Because your ear isn't tuned and your heart isn't postured yet. To be attentively listening. Wow, I feel that. I feel like in this season, God, God wants us to be radically obedient by being radical listeners. But by, by creating opportunities for God to speak in your life, because sometimes our life is so noisy and so crowded that, that, that God has to try to get through all of the noise and the chaos and the cacophony of sounds and feelings and all these other things that keep us from hearing him. Now, verse 11 is powerful. So we know that, that when we do these things, God is going to elevate us. And we know that he's going to give us our, our, our real name. And, and when we flow and we operate in our true name and our true identity, can't nothing stop us. Doors fling open. Favor is just attracted to us because we're actually doing the very thing that we were created to do. We are expressing the very thing that God created us to express. Watch this. We are functioning divinely accurately. And when anything functions divinely accurately, everything that is chaotic around it has to come into the order of it. That'll preach all by itself. But I want to show you something in verse 11. And so it says, therefore God, I'll go back to verse 9. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven. Oh, I love this. Of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. I love this. Those in heaven. Ooh, that's a dimension. Those on earth. That's another dimension. Those under the earth. That's another dimension. I believe that God is speaking to the authority of your name. Your name, I just sense that, that your name is so powerful. When you come into your divine identity, who you are in Christ, in every dimension you win. I feel it. <laughs> in this realm you win. Hallelujah. When you do spiritual warfare in the heavenly realms you win. And the, the under realm, the world of death can't stop you. I feel the spirit of the risen Savior. What are you going to do with the person who death can't stop, who the demonic in the heavenly realms can't stop, and who no man, no man in the earth will, What can you do with someone who has victory on all three levels? You got victory over death. You got victory in life. And you've got victory in the heavenly realm. What can you do with somebody like that? That is all assigned to your name. Can I talk to you like that? But what gets me, and I had never seen it before until I started studying, was verse 11. After verse 10, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. Watch this. It says, it says and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why did that just get me excited? It got me excited because it is one thing for you to know your name. It is one thing for God to call your name. It's another thing for everybody around you not to be able to deny your name. I, I, I got to say that, man. I got to say that. I'm talking about when you align yourself with God and you do the things to get your name, even your enemies won't be able to get your name, your true name, out of their mouth. <laughs> There's going to be so much validation. Every knee is going to bow. Now, you're not Jesus. Every knee is not going to bow to you. They're going to bow to Jesus. And every tongue, but, but every tongue, there are going to be people outside of you that recognize who you are, and they're going to, there's just going to be this, this, this affirmation, this circular global affirmation of who you are that's going to tear everything up. It says, and that every tongue, every tongue, every tongue, I've learned, I'm landing the plane. I've learned, I've learned that when you come into who you truly are divinely, everything around you will submit. Even, 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 even your enemies, your enemies. Well, let's go biblical. The Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. That's in the Psalms or the Proverbs. You know what I'm going to say. Read your whole Bible. You'll find it. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. I am looking forward to the day when, when you know who you are, when everything created, that's the universe, recognizes who you are because you're walking in it. And even your enemies will have to respect who you are because you've been looking at Jesus. You've been paying attention to Jesus. You've been studying Jesus. You've been studying his process right there in those five or six verses is the gospel. Jesus was born. He walked in the flesh. He became obedient. He went to the cross. He was raised up. What? Right. God has highly exalted him. That's the resurrection. It's all there. But the beautiful thing about this passage is it tells us how he got there. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And I want us in this new beginning. For me, Resurrection Sunday is like, like New Year's, right? It's, 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 it's a time where we celebrate the power of the gospel, the power of the gospel to renew, the power of the gospel to raise up things, even things that we thought were dead, the power of God, the power of God himself to perform every promise that he has spoken, 
So for me, it's like New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy resurrection. What is God resurrecting? I believe that God wants to resurrect you. So in this new beginning, I want us to, to build our spirituality, not simply on the promises, the protection, and the provision of God, all of which are wonderful, all of which deserve our hallelujah. I, I, I get that. But why don't we add in this season and we build our spirituality on the person of God? And I believe that as we, as we focus on the, the person of God, that we will begin to become more and more like God because we will know him. And the scriptures say in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, those who know their God, they shall do great exploits. Hallelujah. Great exploits. And I believe that as we're moving into crazy times, and we're seeing things in our generation and our hour that are great things that we have never seen before. And they're great. And I don't say great in the sense that all of them are positive because a lot of them are not. And so right now, everything in our world right now is, is, is resonating in greatness. Why not you? What are you called to do? What are you called to build? I believe. If we follow the Lord and we follow his path, not only are we going to do great exploits, but I believe that God wants to make you and your life and what comes through your life a sign and a wonder. How do I know? I know because this is what Jesus did. And guess what? And you can too. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you so much for this, this study on the mentality and the characteristics of Jesus. And God, as we look at our Lord, we realize that he didn't just do things for himself, but he told his disciples to follow me, which meant so much more than just trailing behind him. But he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, if you follow my ways, hallelujah, you will experience my glory. Father, I pray that these words would take root in our hearts and bear fruit. And that we might, Lord, trust the process of our calling. Because if we trust the process and we submit to the process, we will access the power that will make us unstoppable in life. I thank you for your sons and daughters who have heard this. Seal this word in our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, family. I pray that this message ministered to you as much as it has ministered to me, even sharing it. Go back over that verse. Go back over those notes. Rehearse it. Listen to it again. There's something in it for you. And I believe it's a part of the shaping and the preparation that's going to set you up to do great exploits, to be a sign and a wonder in your family, in your workplace, in business, in ministry, and in every place where you will have the opportunity to shine to the glory of God the Father.